Aloha, how's it? Hello, and welcome to this episode of Tales from the Dark Side. Leading us through this asteroid field of Star Wars is the best darn smuggler this side of Skywalker Ranch, smuggling out Star Wars knowledge and pushing it like spice in the back alleys of 1313. President of the Moss Eisley Han Shot First Fan Club, and if you don't believe it, it's Utah. How rude. It's Madman Marco. And his co-pilot and our rabbit hole police. When episodes fall apart like C-3PO in Cloud City, he's there to carry us out and put it all back together. Once Tatooine's only Wookiee chiropractor, but his Yelp reviews were terrible and his prices, an arm and a leg. The great, the mighty, solo Wookiee. What's up, everybody? The, 50, the 501 Trooper of the Month with a Lego Deluxe model helmet so rare that Marco will certainly fight you for them in the aisles of Walmart. He's the trooper with his very own pet mouse robot, or so he thinks. It's really a Roomba, and he's Leaky Trooper. Hey, thanks. Hey, for those people that don't know, you asked for him back, so we brought him back. The man, the myth, the legend. Sometimes he wears a tinfoil hat. There he is, Jedi Johnson. Jedi Johnson, how are you doing? Thanks for the intro. All right. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that intro. Obviously, we're going back to some of these reviews. We're going to do this for a little bit. We got the second portion of the Darth Vader review. We are going to review number five, six, and seven in the volume number one Darth Vader series. Uh, once again, that is the Gillian series with the Laraka art. Um, here is number five. We have a cover A. Solo, what else do we have? We have the 1 in 25 Loraka, uh, cover A, and a second print. The cover A is just Darth Vader, and there is a green and yellow lightsaber across him, about a foot in front of him, and then him standing behind it. Pretty sweet cover, the way all the lightsabers are reflecting off of his uh, black metallic iron lung suit. I like that one. The one in 25, we have a red lightsaber coming up from the bottom corner, coming all the way across it. And then an uh, in imperial symbol in the very far back. And the twins standing in front of the imperial symbol, behind, in between the lightsaber and the symbol. Both garbed in their cloaks and uh, tunics and capes. Uh, the second print is just like the first one, only with a red background. So the green and yellow across Vader with his red lightsaber extended and a red background. I usually don't get into covers and what they actually look like unless they like them. Uh, can we have a quick vote real quickly? Does anybody like the one in 25 visually? No. No. Okay, that's a bunch of shaking heads in the backgrounds and no's. Okay, very good. It uh, doesn't mean it's not a popular cover. It still is a popular cover because it, sometimes Star Wars doesn't make sense. Here is your scroll. If you want to read the scroll, feel free to pause and you can read the scroll. For all those that forgot and haven't been caught up yet, once again, this is part of like the Dr. Afra arcs where she and Vader are working together or more importantly, she is working for Afra. I think that's how we can put it. So here we go. It started off and she is trying to find um, Silo. She finds him in this. Uh, this is, isn't, wasn't this in the Marvel movies? Weren't these the. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. The, sh the shirt, the shrieky or the shrieky. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> go ahead. The missiles come out. Space yeah. Space whales. Space whales. Missiles come Space out. Whales. <laughs> we get this scene right here. Very familiar. We know who's coming through the blast door. Who is it? It is Twitter not Darth Vader. It is, yeah. Psych. Yep, it is not Darth Vader. It is actually the droids. And then you get to start seeing some of Triple Zero's humor where he says, I'm a distraction, which is funny because he's like the opposite C3PO, but not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's a cur he's a killer murderous droid, but when like C3PO would say stuff that just is like, yeah. Uh, but he is a protocol droid. <laughs> With really dark humor. 
The one thing that I don't understand about the protocol droids real quickly in this game, a little off topic though, is like they actually changed his whole chip system. So he shouldn't be a protocol droid, right? Like that's part of the programming is that you're a protocol droid, but we can take well, that up with it, the droid builders. Yeah. It, yeah. I can see what you're saying. So it's then here comes problem, not a hardware problem. I'm with you. Yeah. Here comes Vader through the space. Um, well, you could call it whatever you want to call it. And he ends up evacuating. Venus. Some, yeah. He ends up evacuating some of the uh, guards. Yep. There you go. Some of the art in this book now, and some of the stuff is there written. in space. So wouldn't that be your anus? Could be. We're all flying out. Yep. The thing is, is that on one of those whales? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. It could be. Anyways, so Vader, for somebody who hates droids, he sure is leading a droid army, isn't he? Either way, they get in there, start to go to find where he's at. The next page, all of a sudden, you get a little bit of fighting. They feel that there is a human force there. And we get a lot. I'm, anybody want to name their names? Because I'm going to screw them up. Aelin and Morit. Or Morin. Yeah, I mean, the brother and sister, kind of twins, kind of forcey. We'll get into those characters in a little bit. They end up being there. There's a part where the the, the boy, that's what I'm going to call him, not, not quite a man, boy. not quite a man yet, is like, uh, eh, yeah, I've been waiting for you, Vader. Like, dude, come on, man. Like, you're, you're not waiting for him in your yellow lightsaber, bro. Uh, and Barely he's got an apprentice and you're waiting for Vader. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. They, was it me? Are they poorly drawn? Check out my new Jordans. Like a couple of weenies. They just don't look. Yeah, the art wasn't so good. And not just that, but there's fight scenes going on. I just cut this out of the fight scenes because the fight scenes weren't that bad to point out. Yeah, the new, as Jedi said, check out my new Jordans. He's got like <laughs> Iron Man pulsar laser things to because he can't use Rocket the force. Booster Jordans. So not a lot of padding between their feet and those uh, and those rocket boosters. Yeah, I mean, look, there's, yeah, and then she's got the semi-spinning green lightsaber, but then Vader swings past it. I don't know. But there we go. So we got we're, the guy we were looking for. There is uh, Silo, and he says, you know, you're looking for Silo 4. Here we go. Another first appearance. You got the twins. It looks now like got um, Joey Fatone and Sylvester Stallone had a baby. They draw him a bunch of different ways. Uh, this one is actually not silo four so maybe he loses like his fourth chin between four and five i don't know if you if you saw him in the last book what was he in two yeah i mean i don't know man. i think his robot eye was uh was on the other side <laughs> <laughs> yeah they had some so he introduces kind of a new team and this team is a group of people that he has kept around and they apparently are going to challenge darth vader they have, they've been, um, some of them have been just, you know what, it, it, I'm not even going to get into what they are. A lot of them are just groups that they kind of put stuff together with. It, it actually plays out a lot better in the book than it sounds right now, but it's later on. This book does not do, this book is not, uh, it's not it, that it good. It falls a little short on the Apprentice uh, League here that they're trying to build and, and train as uh, extras so to speak, or to maybe be a threat. Uh, um, uh, how did, how did Palpatine say to Maul and then Dooku and all of them as their, his pawns, they, they were used to just a means to a purpose and then to be disposed of. When I first read this, I thought it, maybe it's because it's been a while now and now I know it happens, but I, I thought it was like interesting, I guess was the way to put it. Like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I wonder where they're going to go there. Because this group that he's assembling, you could tell, is like going to attack Vader. And then the Emperor, like you don't know if the Emperor at this point when you're reading it, when it first came out, if the Emperor knows about it. You do find out in this book that he does. But as the book goes on, the Emperor doesn't, he kind of knows about it, but he doesn't know everything about it, right? He doesn't know really all the characters. And then you get uh, Silo, and apparently he then lost his chin again. Um, but he's got a very long throat. Yeah, he looks really like Joey Fatone from NSYNC here. I have no clue who you're talking about, but keep referencing it. Bye Somebody bye will. Bye. No. Um, <laughs> We're trying to bring bye in bye. that younger crowd. We're trying to bring oh. in the young crowd, man. Yeah, yeah. I know that guy. Bam. Yay. Um, <laughs> Joey, so. He's my favorite. He's my favorite. Justin is the best, but Joey, close second. 
Okay. You know Justin uh, Timberlake, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Britney Spears' husband. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, so he silo pretty much says this this was actually kind of cool so that you know this series does do this a lot there's parts where it's kind of dry and kind of i think they're patching stuff together but then they'll have like great bubble lines or they'll have one frame that's really good and here he kind of says like hey i'm trying to prove to the empire that uh, the emperor that you're just like the apprentice is a ceremonial type role right mm -hmm. and i can use these people and i can kind of mimic like the force and everything like that and my creations are really cool. It reminds us a lot of people who had showed up in other series before and or in canon at the time anymore. I think Silo was really cool. Um, you know, there's a certain doctor that showed up and lost an arm. Well, not him, but you know what I mean. That that this is a very similar character related to it. So I thought it was really cool how they did that originally. So he has his people attack. Once again, um, the art here is to be desired. So we get into number two or uh, sorry six darth vader number six number six we have a just a cover a and a second print so again second print red background but the cover is a closer up of palpatine with his hood up grinning evilishly with his hands kind of rubbing each other like <laughs> i've done it again and vader just in the background just over the right of his shoulder and he's kind of looking down a little bit sad Vader face almost. So yeah, it's on his throne. And this is actually the photo real picture of the emperor. However, they decide to do the comic book version of Vader in the background. Very interesting way. Here is, is your it meant to, uh, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, is it meant to, to make Vader look like he's just been scolded and that he's like pouting because that's how it looks to me. Well, but Vader has always taken the emperor's little, little jabs and little tests to me he's always taking those things kind of in stride like you know yeah yeah whatever i mean this no, is the it, game right you're it's a simple yeah, game right. I'm, it looks like he's hunched over face down like he's like the bad dog in the corner i, I don't well, really isn't agree. it um like in the previous episode wasn't joy fatone kind of teasing him and saying my guys are better than you and the emperor right. with stronger right hand so, you yeah. know, this was one of the things where they start to develop the relationship before. This is when they started doing it. Now they've continued on. But remember, this is between the New Hope era. This is right after the Death Star blew up. So, and Tarkin's gone. There's nobody really left there. We do know through one through four that he's kind of already put another weaker version with Tag in charge and saying, like, you have to follow this guy now. Vader has already destroyed a spy saying like tag you're not that important and the emperor does keep throwing stuff at him and now he's just figured out that oh there's some secret program that the emperor has had running and he hadn't told me about this so yeah he's like the guy that's like i thought we were like dad and son and now you're keeping secrets from me and now so he's he like the last guy picked on the dodgeball team mm -hmm. so we're gonna get back into uh the silo story here in number six but what's even more interesting is they're gonna uh, tie in towards the end, and we'll get into it. The Boba Fett storyline that happened in the actual main Aaron Star Wars title that's the one where Luke Skywalker uh, runs into Boba Fett. Boba Fett is put out there to figure out who blew up the Death Star. He does, he runs into Luke Skywalker in Obi Wan's hut. Either way, we start off with Vader actually not looking so depressed now, he looks like he's ready to play. And the Emperor obviously is saying, hey, it's game time. So they try to use force, whatever, fire, um, you know. <laughs> eh, hey, uh, Silo's yeah, trying to... seen all that before. Right. Vader's like, yeah. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. A guy's, uh, the, the one twin's kneeling, the other one's just sitting back there. Silo's trying to sell these characters, and this is where you kind of see that the Emperor he knows something about the program, but doesn't know that much because he's like okay next these guys don't seem like they're great so then he brings out the uh transdoshian transdoshian and he's like hey listen you know you can kind of burn this guy i gave him a couple of modifications of cybermate um you know you could use it on different characters too we could turn that into a rancor too which i think would be kind of cool like if they did that with a rancor like an un unbeatable rancor type thing but that doesn't impress the emperor, and he's like, "Yeah, whatever." Next, then we get this chick. Um, 
who is Tula. She's a scientist. She actually studies all the stuff she uses. She almost mimics the force at this point. A lot of these are like half-baked ideas too. They kind of seem okay, but you could tell that they're not going to be able to overpower Vader. Obviously the Emperor can too, because he's like next. Yeah, that um, does she have a bunch of the training balls that Luke Skywalker fought? What are those like the little the psh, psh. Yeah, it was just like laser ball. Yes, it was like yeah. that similar like, thing. Well, so laser. so remind me, Marco. So she's not using the force, she's got like a cyber link with these little she does have a cyber link with right? the okay. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't actually have the force at all. She uses technology to create things that would mimic the force. That's what she does. Um yeah, it's not that impressive. Look at I know uh, I have a little some of these characters were based on D D characters, so it holds a soft spot in my heart. But bring on they, Mon Cala Grievous. This one I actually <laughs> like, and that's exactly what he is. So you get uh Corbin Caburn K K Barn Carbon Commander Carbon. Carbon. Yeah, so he was actually a commander in the Clone Wars, but then he got all messed up and they like brought him back, like and then decided to grievous his body. That's pretty much what they did. They grievous his body. Okay, so I get it. None of these are new. That's why it's kind of disappointing. But this one had the most potential. The fighting it was pretty good. However, uh, you know, the Emperor wasn't impressed. So now Silo's got weird arms. I think Rob <laughs> did the art here. That look on the surprised. Emperor's face. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that is <laughs> Wow. Sure it looks like a bulldog. And then <laughs> and then Silo 5 has definitely got some some Liefeld arm action going on here. Yeah, like, yeah this is Silo 5, not for now. So second appearance, because this is a second appearance of Silo, Silo 5, 5, not Silo 4. You can tell the difference because of the small arms. Um, hey, I have a quick, quick question. Were there yes. different artists through these no. books? No. Nope. 5 through 8 was the... Was it the same artist? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, same artist, but I think the time con wow. constraints on some of it, it may have played. His hands started cramping. Well, just wildly yeah. inconsistent how he's drawing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think some of this was, was rushed and rewritten and, and last minute. No, it wasn't. They were planned, this planned out all the time. It was just bad. Um, so <laughs> there they go. Now everybody's going at it. As you can see, they're even fighting each other, which didn't make a ton of sense. He gets stabbed by the brother Morin, I believe, is the twin that stabs him. Morin. Yeah. And he goes, uh, hey, I won't. Vader goes, I won't forget what you did here today. The twin's cocky. This kid uh, thinks he's somebody. He says, uh, don't get sentimental. Only reason I saved you is because the, in the long term, the older model is less of a threat than the new. Listen, uh, it's okay for the Empire, the Emperor to tease Vader. If I was that kid... That's not a good idea, bro. No. Just don't do that. <laughs> that dude, that he, yeah, that was. You ever hear old man strength? I don't know if that's a thing that people say anymore, but when I was a kid and a little bit cockier than I am now, somebody one time told me about old man strength. I don't mess with old men, dude. That's not a good thing. <laughs> so What's that song, I'm not as good as it once was, but I'm good once as I ever was. There you go. Uh, yeah, right. He'll give him the, the choke. Jedi had it. So here you go. So Vader says, I have no interest in your motivations, boy. See, there's the reference to boy. We 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 gave you a little bit of a little bit of spoiler early on. You interfered. That life was mine to take. Okay, so he's just not happy. Um, and then says to Kylo, "This is or Silo. This is the best part." He's like, "Yeah, these these things will work. I could deal. I I'll take them from you now, and they will now work for me." Which you know, that's not going to make Silo too uh, happy about that. The Emperor, on the other hand, is like, eh, okay, maybe they might work. Vader, you're with me, though. We'll figure it out. By the way, you will go after our enemies. You just can't kill each other or else. He takes Vader into here, and then they just, there's some good conversations here. We're not going to break it all down, but he breaks down a bunch of stuff with Vader real quickly, important things. Vader's like, oh, what's going on? He gets a little shunned. He goes back. He feels something. Then we get the scenes that I really want to talk about. We get the crossover with it. And this is kind of cool. I actually do like starting from when, when the emperor starts telling Vader, like, you don't know everything. It's not your job to know that, you know, I'll teach you things. I'll be a tool to you get Boba Fett, even though a short Boba Fett shows up and he goes, Hey, I got to tell you something. I got something. And Vader says, well, what'd you get? 
he goes a name and the name Skywalker. That's who blew up the Death Star, which is really cool. It really was cool to read that when it came up for the first time, right? And then you got this panel. This is what the weird part is, man, right? Like then all of a sudden you get the perfect panel. You get the sky. He says Skywalker and the glass cracks from the viewpoint. So he goes back to the emperor and sees him in a hologram. And the emperor's like, I feel your anger. What's going on? And he's like, you never told me about this. There's a bunch of other panels. They do the Padme flashbacks and stuff to that effect. They do some of the Skywalker flashbacks. And he pretty much says, and this is kind of cool. Because it's like a double meaning. He goes, now pretty much I know that my, it's my son out there and he'll be mine pretty much. He will help me out. And that's where they leave off on that episode. It's a pretty and, good one. And this one conflicts with Empire Strikes Back because that's where he learns in the movie. And I know it's only the special editions. That's where he learns that um, Luke but it was doesn't. Son of Anakin Skywalker. But it doesn't because he knows what that they, he has a son named Skywalker out there. He doesn't know it's Luke Skywalker. He's never seen Luke Skywalker to this point. Even though he'll have, they'll do a flashback later. He actually doesn't know that person. He just knows there was somebody flying an X wing, and that that person went to the hut. Gotcha. It turns out gotcha. It is. he doesn't actually okay. know. That. Go ahead, Jedi. I just wanted to, before you go to the next issue, am I allowed to give this a Boba Fett bump, extra half a helmet? I mean, if Mike can have an Ahsoka bump, I get a Boba Fett bump. (laughs) There you go. All right. Yeah, yeah. Boba Boba bump. We haven't haven't ranked those two. I was going to go back and rank them again at the end to see how that works out and then rank it as a whole or just rank the arc as a whole as we did it. But yeah, I think we could, you could definitely give it a Boba bump. It was a short, but hey, uh, where is it? It was a short Boba bump. It was a short bubble bump, but it is a bubble I'll take bump. It. I'll take and, it. And it's a worthy bubble bump because he drops that Skywalker name for the first time to Vader. I mean, that's that right there is a very important panel. Yeah, yeah. Huge moment. Huge. It yeah. really does play out well. Like a lot of these, that's why we're trying to like part arcs together to give you like a little bit. This run, you're going to see it a lot. There's like some portions, even like half a comic book where you're like, <clears throat> well, that, that didn't. That didn't stay well. It's like milk. You know what I mean? Like it was great when you got the first day. We're about two weeks into the milk in some of these pages. So like yeah. it's been a while. It didn't hold up as well as it should have. And then, but you still get the goodies at the end, man. It it's really like when SpongeBob fell in love with that hamburger and then he kept it around for a long time and started never mind. Was that part of in sync? No, SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Um, here we go. So now we got Darth Vader 7. Solo, are you around to give us the Darth Vader 7? <laughs> so we got the San Diego Comic Con BX cover and cover A. The San Diego is just basically a black and white of the original cover A. And this is the they made a puzzle later on and a bunch of other things, but this is the infamous shadow of Vader on the Tatooine home. Um, actually, I think this was the shop. It's not even the home because the home was sunk down. This is kind of the shop um, desert bubble igloo looking thing. I forgot the name of those things. There is a name and I forgot it, but just with the suns behind him, you can see Vader's shadow cast onto it. And uh, a little bit of some uh, an almost forced mi- force mist kind of going through there, it looks like. That's a lot of artistic detail. Um, I will say this. It gets everywhere. Yeah. So this is when they were starting to come down to the line of, you know, around seven back in the day where they'd start doing, stop all the extra additives. They do pick it back up after, I think, eight but seven for right now. And this is the last book we're going to stop at here. And then we'll get into the next arc after that. Seven is kind of where you start to see it just go down to one issue for a while. You don't get a lot of variants. That PX thing, you know what a PX variant is or a diamond variant. Uh, when you think about preview, you know what I mean? It's a preview variant. So PX. Okay. Here's the scroll. If I didn't talk long enough over it, you can pause it. And then we will, obviously we're going to get a little bit starting off with, Tatooine. It's really cool. And I actually did like these panels. I actually like the coloring that they did on this. I thought it was a lot better. They kind of turned the corner here as far as the artwork goes. 
Darth Vader's going back to the spot to see if he can force feel anything. He goes to Obi-Wan's hut with Afra and Triple Zero. I don't know why, but he does. I mean, I do know why, but like, you know, whatever. He goes inside. It's pretty abandoned. There's some cool things that he gets into right here. You know, first off, he sees a little bit of the action here in the red line. You can see Boba Fett and Luke. It does look different. You never get to see his face, really. I will say this. When you see it in Star Wars, there's a lot of bumbling that goes on in that. Like, it also accidentally, um, Obi-Wan's journal pops out. And I know a lot of us are thinking, like, the Obi-Wan show might have links to this portion right here because it does... You know, the Obi-Wan journal takes it back before New Hope. This, however, once again, is between New Hope and the Empire. You get a little bit of Vader here. I isolated this because I thought it was such a good line. And this is kind of how this series works out. He goes, you had 20 years, Obi-Wan, hiding the boy in one place. I would never return was cunning. But in this, you are a failure because Obi-Wan at this point is obviously dead. The funny thing is, like, there's always been questioning, and I don't think they're going to retcon this. Like, there's always been questioning if Darth Vader knew where Luke Skywalker was located. And I you think, think he, um, you think uh, Vader found the picture of him and Obi-Wan in the photo booth when they went to like the arcade and they were like hanging out, and, you know, they were on the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, was all mad. He, he, he found that in Obi-Wan's things. No, I think he, I think he found like the pictures of Obi-Wan back there, like taking pictures from the mountain of baby Luke Skywalker, drinking blue milk, falling all uh, over, going out to uh, Takashi stations or whatever. And, and finding some motivators. Um, I love it. So, I can I can see Obi and uh, and uh, Luke in the in the photo booth, and and Luke with his Disney ears on, his Mickey Mouse selfies. ears, and they're you know the little like, strip. That was that was perfect. That'd be it's great. it's the two of them like taking selfies on a dual <laughs> speeder, like one in front of the other. Like, yeah, yeah. No, um, so you get that right there. That's kind of a cool line. Also, two cup ride. They did this where like she doesn't really blow it up, but she like disposes of all which is also a cool trick like so afro's got these this technology where she can just like annihilate any of like the dna or forensic evidence and stuff like that of them being there obviously vader's kind of brewing then they get us over here to santu we get to see a what are these kids the ro rodians the rodians rodians that's a lot of heads wow do you, what's do in you the know box? Uh, Winnie the Pooh, what's in the, the box? Huffleups and weasels, Huffleups and Woozles dream that Winnie the Pooh has. That's what yes. that looks like. Yes, and I think it is. What's in the box? He ends up so. What's one in of the his, box? <laughs> yeah, one of his um, peons lost whatever the cargo. So he's throwing in there. He's giving this big speech. It's kind of like a half book now. Then Vader shows up with the troopers. They just start shooting everybody. That's a cool panel, man. Go back. It is. To this is a cool panel. Being a, being a trooper, man. That that's sweet. How he also says like it's I I can't read exactly what he says, but if I it's recall, he says something like pointless, it's pointless to resist. Yeah, pointless to resist, which is good. He started using some good lines. I just there. I'm just amazed at how there's panels. You said this already. Marco, but there's panels that are just really, really well done, and there's other ones that are like, what I got, happened? I got a question for for Leaky. So if you're Leaky, if you're that, if you're a trooper out there, do you want to be next to Vader in that firefight, or do you want to be like away from Vader? Oh, we always want to be the fight. one right next to Vader. In fact, because Vader might he might get. I mean, he's deflecting. Yes. He's like so he might lose an arm, man. So one thing, uh, Jedi, and this is true, in the 501st, if you're standing on either side of Vader, just watch these guys. They'll never have the gun pointed at Vader. We always have to hold it away from Vader. And the troopers that are on either side of them have earned the right to be there, so they're probably going to get whacked with the lightsaber. You don't, you don't want to misfire and take out, take out Vader. Uh, yeah, or protect no. him, as he's so if you whacked him with the lightsaber, that's like an honor, man. You know. <laughs> All right, so the next panel, also a good panel. But kind of funny, um, not quite as funny as the space anus, but like he ends up force throwing uh, the little wannabe criminal boss into this creature's mouth and then ends up, you know, if like eating the, it isn't enough, he then stabs it and cuts through it. So, oh yeah, a little humor there. It, it turns out that there's all these a credits. Ton there's a ton ton parallel there. There's all these credits. One of the huts is like, hey, Jabba really appreciates this. 
by the way, where can the money be? And it further establishes the fact that the empire is like, no, no, no. Just because you're here and we have to use you doesn't mean we trust you or we like you. Those are the emperor's credits now, not yours. We'll see you later. Then it does the split story um, that a lot of these do. It gets into another split story where it goes to Afra and Afra gets put on a mission to do something in the next book. Go get some resources, I believe. Uh, hey, I have a question here. Is that guy shaking his head or is he like some sort of drug trip? No, that's what he's supposed to look like. That's what he's supposed wow. to look like. Yeah. Man, that is freaky. So we also get knockoff IG-88 as uh, solo rookies. Hmm? Red IG-88. Red. We get we get skinny leg Bosk. That is not Bosk. Uh, and we get very short Mandalorian guy. Uh, we so get black series of these guys. We should get some black series very soon. Uh, very interesting. These characters' appearances are here too. Feel free to mark that one. Uh, CGC as a first appearance for short Mandalorian dude. Um, <laughs> they pretty much are watching a fighting pit where Black K is just destroying That's people. Great. There's a bunch more uh, good panels in here about the fighting, but pretty much they're all assembling together and they're assembling together so that Dr. Afra can use them to go after these ships to grab the resources. And that will lead us into eight when we will see you next time in eight. But before we do that, Let's go over it really quickly. I'll go over the covers. We can give out a ranking of um, force chokes. Let's do force chokes. So uh, we have a guest. His name is Jedi Johnson, if you don't know him. Jedi Johnson. We are going to start with number five. Just five sitting alone with the twins, including artwork. How would you rank number five force choke wise? Well, since I was the first time I've ever seen any of these ever. No, I'm joking. Uh, so... God, you guys make this look a lot easier. Uh, I'll give it four, three and a half. But is, isn't Boba in that one? Boba was in that one, right? No, no, I'm thinking no, too no, far back. Never mind, a, never. Three and a half. Three next. and a half. You don't get a four. Three and a half. Three and a half. All right, three and a half. Solo, what do you got on it? Um, I, I'm going to give it a three. Three. Very good. All right. Obrick, sorry. Um, I did not like that book, man. I, I don't like the twins. I don't like how they're making Vader. I'm giving that a 2.5. Mm -hmm. The inconsistent art. Yeah, I mean, I wish, sentimentally, uh, we've talked about in our first review, there's a little bit of a link there uh, between somebody who is listed here. Uh, her initials are H, A, and locally Detroit, and even more locally, my local comic book shop. And uh some of the characters here have got a sentimental value. So I try to swallow this issue, but the more I try to sell it, the worse I sound like a used car salesman. No offense to used car salesman. Uh, but I no, wait a minute. I live in Detroit. Did I just rip on some artist that lives nearby? And I'm going to, I won't be. No, Heather Antos, anymore. Heather Antos used to go to comic city. She, oh. That was like a regular store. She went to EMU. I don't want like, to turn off my faucet on my, uh, my pulls every month. If I start. No, 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 The you East siders are fine. <laughs> um, but she's got some friends who characters are like their dungeon dragons. Right? Characters are based off of, I, with that being said, as much as I try to love it, it's a combination of a filler, bad art and a lagging storyline where put in too many, well, well, you said it, Mark. Some of those characters were like half developed. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, so I'm, but because of, I can't give it sentimental, but I'm going to give it sentimental anyways because it's my show. I'm giving it a three. Now we're going to move on. Jedi, you gave the last one a three and a half. This one, if you remember the scroll, we did get a little bit of bubble <laughs> fat, even though it's a short bubble fat at an end. This is number six. Uh, what do you got on number six? Well, as much as I like. Of course, Boba Fett. So it will get the Boba bump. I don't like the fact that the cover has Darth Vader looking like he's pouting. I don't like that. Like he's sulking. Like pick you know, kid, the kid up. in the yeah yeah the kid in the corner. And I know I I know we're just talking about the comics here and not some of the the, the canon books. But Boba, 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 the Boba um, the Boba uh, Vader lets a lot of that that crap that. Um, that the emperor does kind of roll off his back. I mean, he knows the game 
And in fact, and he's playing the game. So I don't like the fact that the cover is making him look like he's like beat down and sad. So I'm going to give it a three. Oh, that's with the Boba bump is a three. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You caught me. Three and a half. Three and a half, All right. three and a half to three and a half. All right. Yeah. So what do you got? You gave the last one three. What do you have on this? How many chokes are you going to uh, get? I, I like this one a lot more, and it, it pans out better. You start to see the the artwork solidify a little bit more and kind of start to gel together a little bit more. Um, I think the artist is getting more – I don't know if they're getting more – of themselves liberation to do what they need or want, or if they're just getting more comfortable by this point of, of the art, the backdrops, the area and, and doing enough of it that it's starting to become easier for them. Um, it, it, to me, it's, this book is kind of a big book because this is when Vader finds out it's his son that blew up the death star. And that's, a big moment throughout star Wars lore. Like that's, and I've, and I saw it years ago, younger thinking, you know, when does he, cause you don't see that timeline in between a new hope and empire. So to get that chance to see this is big for me. Uh, may not be for other people, but it, it, it weighs heavy on me. I, I, I got to give it a solid four. Hmm, cool. All right. Four. All right. Low bricks, leaky, leaky, and low bricks. I'm sorry, man. It's a long day. Leaky, go ahead. Um, yeah, I I'm kind of with Wookie on that one. It's kind of a tale of two books, right? The first half of the book, not great. I I hate when that twin kind of rips on Vader. Vader would have killed him, man. Uh, but the the second half of the book brings it up. So I'm I would have been a three, but I'm going to give it the Boba bump for a three point five as well. Three point five for Leaky. All right. This is what I'm going to say about this. The I, I, it's hard to grade it, but we are grading single issues. Like Laroca did the art in the first four, and some of the stuff there was really well. Actually, one of the covers that's most popular is the Laroca for number three, where he reenacted. Yeah, which is good. But then you see some of this stuff, and if you just do it by yourself, the story writing has got a little bit of gapping. I do like the issues where the Emperor was like next, next, next. I yeah. thought it started to play a lot better, uh, the writing altogether, than the first one, where it seemed like they really had maybe five or six pages, and they tried to extend it for some reason. Um, obviously, I like the crackling of the glass when he says Skywalker. Yeah. Look, man, like that whole thing, I'm a big fan of that part of the Aaron run and that storyline and seeing this New Hope stuff there. The art did, did deter a little bit. I gave the last one a three. I have to give this a 3.5 because I actually think the story art, the 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 actual writing and how it flowed was a lot better. I'm not exactly going to say that the story, the actual art was, because even when you did have something like, sure, you got the crackling of the glass and the next panel is a short Boba Fett that's disproportionate, even if you're doing from that angle from it. So I give it a 3.5. Let's move to the last one and then we will rank the this arc overall. So the last one is number seven. Jedi, you've now given us a three and a half, a Boba Fett three bump three and a half. This technically has a slave one slash Boba Fett in it, so I don't know if we're gonna get a bump out of it. Let us know. A, Boba, Boba bump is a Boba bump. I mean, if he's in there, it gets the Boba bump. Um, well, I actually liked ragging and, and teasing this one uh, whenever the way we did whenever. Vader was in Obi Wan's oh, the cave, so that almost makes me want to give it a high because it was such fun to kind of tease it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a. Other than that, though, uh, I'm gonna give it a three. Hmm. With the bubble bump, bump. bump, that's okay. the bubble bump. Yeah, I mean, other, th yeah, yeah, it's all right. All right, Solo, what do you got? I like this issue. Um, again, it, it speaks a bit of volumes to me. I'm hoping that we maybe see a, a flash forward out of the Obi-Wan journal or some kind of relevance to this at some point somewhere along the line. Maybe even just, it's even not in the Obi story, but something else. Um, I like seeing Vader back on Tatooine. I love the line 
when he admits to, to Obi-Wan, you know, good play. Like, I'd have never looked on my own home planet with my own, you know, stepfather. I, I'd have never thought about it. That was a good play. But right now I'm, I'm the winner. Mm. Um, I, I got, I got to go three and a half. All right, three, four, three and a half. Leaky Trooper. Yeah, I'm the well, I'm like the boba bump. This one got the Tatooine bump for me. Just that 1977 retro writing of Tatooine and um, Vader against the workshop there. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. But again, the art is kind of wonky in places. And in, in, in certain places, it's awesome. In other places, it's not great. And I got to be honest, the triple zero, I like, I love that droid. And he made an appearance, although briefly. So I'm going to give the Tatooine and the Boba Bump and go 3.5. 3.5. I will agree with you on this. I don't think they solidified the Afra character at this point, and they have figured out what she's supposed to look like or kind of where she's going. So I think there was a lot of changing around, too. You can see it in her facial structure and stuff like that. The same thing with uh, Silo. There's really, you know, I know we were joking around, but, <clears throat> I mean, there's – I know it's Silo 3, Silo 4, and Silo 5 between book number two in this series and book number seven. But come on, man. Like, that's not how it works. <laughs> He's just like somebody who transfers his being into the same clone. It's not like he it, – it's the exact same clone. He shouldn't be transferring. I, I know that's just nitpicking. Overall, the storyline for this one was pretty good. I did enjoy it. Um I actually think that the art started to come together here. Like the storyline started to come together in the last one again. Like they revived. I think the art started to come back together here now again. I really like the fighting pit portion of it. Obviously, I like the bounty hunters. I do think there's a little bit of a callback to like some of the earlier stuff in the Dark Horse comics when they start getting into the shorter Mandalorian and like the whole how it's walking, you know, like Fett Club and everything like that, dude. It just reminded me of that. It then did when I read it again. I thought it was kind of catchy. It's funny. Um, and then I think towards the end, you kind of see Afra as she's going to be from now on. And you kind of get in her way, in her way a little bit. Now I know they do change away. Um, she looks very Asian here, which she's, I think supposed to be like, that was the whole question while this is coming up a while ago. That's the only reason I bring it up is they were trying to see what type of nationality she was. And I think they were trying to find it now. Not that they, I mean, they're all aliens, right? Like you're all aliens. You're in space. Yeah. So anyways, uh, with that being said, I definitely like the Tatooine stuff. I definitely liked the Obi stuff. I liked that Vader was like, yeah, dude, 20, 20. You know, come on, man. It was kind of funny, too. He's like, he defended himself well for no trading. Like, that's jokes. Like, that's funny Star Wars jokes that when we're all together, when we're joking, we do that. Like, like the intro said with Jedi, Han shot first. Believe it. Like, yeah, like, guess what? <laughs> He had no trading. Luke Skywalker had no trading, but all of a sudden it's a Jedi Knight. Like, I mean, that's just the good stuff that just, I mean, will never end our arguments. Um, with, so with that being said, I'm going to have to give it a 4-2. Now let's hey, go Mark, over. One thing about this issue that you mentioned earlier was Afra's power, the archaeology power mm -hmm. where she could wipe the DNA. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. I know you didn't bring that up this time, um, but mm -hmm. that, that was pretty neat. Does she care? I, I don't know much about the Afro character. Does she carry that over? Like, did that become part of her character later? We will get into that. So we're not spoiling the whole series and all the Afro stuff, but we are going to. That's why we're doing these in portions. We're trying to keep them around 30 minutes. Obviously, this one's running a little bit longer. But, hey, I think this group is working good. We're going to try to keep going it after this. Let's just give it an overall for this arc, for this three-book arc. Real quickly, Jedi, what do you got? Give me a number. For just the three we did today. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, I don't know. So we're not going to average it. I'll, I'll, three and a half. That's pretty much I mean, what your average was. Three and a half. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I don't want people to think I hate it because it's three and a half. Three and, I mean, I, I enjoyed this arc. It's pretty good. Three but and a half is good. Yeah. It didn't hold up. I mean, but I, honestly, it didn't. All right. So what do you got? I, I too am at three and a half. But it's got cool. some good and some bad, but it's it's uh, it's a lot closer to the good side than the bad for sure. Uh, Leaky Trooper surprisingly coming out with the lowest grade out of anybody on any book with the two five on 
uh, number five. So let's hear what he thinks his average is. Yeah, I'm going to say three. Just dip a little bit. I just did not like the characters in that first book. They're rough. I mean, they really are rough. I just hope they, I hope they don't bring them back later on. Uh, I mean, and I and I'm first time in the series, so I don't know what's coming next. So I truly am. I definitely think six, seven, and eight got way better than five. There's no doubt. Like, yeah. So yeah, it's it a could, ramping average. The two, I gave it a three, but I think it's hard too because you come off of one through four, which were really good, mm -hmm. and then you come to these three. I know I gave a four there. Overall, as this half portion of the arc, um, you know, I got to give it probably like a three, two, five. You know, it's right in there. There's just so many things that are wrong. I know I had graded a little higher because of nostalgia, but three, two, five is not a bad. Listen, like Jedi said, you know, you're getting the threes. It's not bad. It just didn't hold up as well as the first time I remember reading it through. You well, know what I mean? You said something early on, Marco. And I remember, I'm not really a comic book guy. And I, I know how television series work. And when you said filler, is that when they're doing a, a series like that and they start, um, do they plot out like the first four books and then they almost have to catch up with the middle, like five, six, seven? Well, so yeah, I mean, some a lot, a lot of, it depends on when you were doing it because they write it for... For a while there, Marvel was trying to write books for trades. Like that's what they were trying to write their arcs for because the trade business was very good compared to the print business. I mean, I guess that's another topic we can get in or we can talk about on MCM one day. But <clears throat> that's what they were doing. So like you would get at certain points, you used to get the filler or the like backstories or, you know, just in Marvel, you'd get them in the mids, like the sixes through eights uh, when they're doing twelves. <clears throat> and then because you get that art and then you get that push on the back end also that's when they would reduce down so you wouldn't get like a b cover anymore because you'd have lower prints because naturally after the first three or four prints your print run runs lower um <clears throat> just so how it's always been in comics i mean it's changing now obviously the market always changes but yeah so these were uh, i'm trying to think i think at this point they tried to do the short arcs because they were trying to keep it under 20 dollars per tpb um so that when they're their, doing that, that was their like fourteen ninety nine price mark, wasn't it? Right. Yep. Yep. They're trying not to go up, so they reduced it down from twelve to eight to six. So this was probably a six part run right here. So this was supposed to be kind of like you're like, yeah, okay, cliffhanger. Look, we'll check out the rest of them later. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but uh, for right now, I think it's a pretty solid thing. Go ahead, Jay. Well, I just wanted to, hey, I, I mean, I appreciate you guys kind of bringing my focus to the interior art because I'll be honest, I don't pay attention to that a whole lot when I'm reading. I'm a cover guy. I like the cover mm -hmm. art. You know, it grabs you. I like the storylines, uh, the writing, not too much writing because uh, mm -hmm. it is a comic book. And But the interior art, sometimes I don't pay attention to it. So I appreciate you guys bringing me kind of, I'll look more at that in, in, in the future. Yeah, I hope you do. And and honestly, the good part about Star Wars, especially when you start getting into some of the Aaron stuff is, and not that this is Aaron stuff because it isn't, but even with some of the other ones, I just don't want to spoil everything. There's a lot of stuff in the background when you're looking at the art and you're like, oh, there's an Easter egg in here. Like, mm -hmm. it's really cool. Like, they do that type of stuff. And he always has. Um, and so is some of the other artists. He does too in some of his series. Obviously, Scott and the rest of them do also. Either way, we won't get into that. Well, you know what it was with me, Jedi? I found it like pulls you out of the book. Like if you're into the story and you're going through it, and then all of a sudden there's some wonky, like a little Boba Fett, it's kind of like you're rolling, you're rolling, all of a sudden, whoa. Or when they had Palpatine's face look like the, the bulldog. You're kind of going through the book. and I actually like that face on Palps. I know, but... But it kind of, you know when it says it pulls you out? <laughs> it needs to be on a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The thing that threw me off a little bit in the artwork is the disproportionate from the upper body to the legs in a lot of these characters. You see I tend to go from bubble to bubble reading. I, I kind of scan the art, but I'm more of a bubble, you know, just kind of reading the... Gotcha. Yeah. But I'm I'll, a, I'll, I'll try, I'll try uh, and uh, change my ways. No, I'm like a four-year-old when I read, so I like look at the picture first and try to tell what the story is, and then I go back and sound out words. Uh, so, I mean, that's why I'm a Marvel reader, not a DC reader, because Marvel doesn't put too many words on a page. I think there's a big disadvantage for me reading comic books later in life, because I saw movies and stuff first. So when I'm reading comic books, I'm thinking it's like a movie in my head. So I'm taking in the whole panel all at once. I'm looking at the pictures, I'm reading the bubbles, and... 
And so I, it sounds weird that I get pulled out of a comic book by some bad art, but you know what I'm talking about when you're going through a movie and all of a sudden there's some crappy special effects and you're like, whoa, that, well, that just that just pulled me right out of the movie. You mean like flares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, never saw a movie that had crappy. Yeah, no, never. Yeah. All right. With that being said, we're coming on the uh, almost the hour mark. So like, subscribe, do all the stuff you're supposed to do. Hit that. We will shorten it down next time for you guys. I think we're going to try to get this force them back, though. Like, it's kind of fun. All right. Uh, Jedi, great having you. Hopefully, you'll be back in the next one. Solo. Please like and subscribe, everybody. And may the force be with you. Always. Always. Always.